This is another video that was requested months ago and I'm finally getting around to. Hey guys, bullet journal terminology. Uh, if you have been around for a while in the planner community or if you've been bullet journaling for a while, you probably know most of these, but if you're just getting started, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm gonna go through a whole list of different planner terms and bullet journal terms specifically uh, in case you get lost because these are probably words that I have already accidentally thrown out without defining. So let's get them all over with. Bullet journal. It's a system devised by a guy named Ryder Carroll and posted in a video which he created a few years back. Link below. Uh, basically, it is a system. It's sort of a do-it-yourself planner. It is sort of just a notebook where you throw everything in it and then it helps you figure out your life and plan it. And if you're watching this video, you probably already have been doing it a little bit. If you see the term Bujo, Bujo is short for bullet journal because BJ was taken. The bullet journal system is named after the bullets that you use to identify a task in the system. So the key, which some people write out in front of their journal, I don't because I don't find it too complicated, but you have a dot or a bullet for a task, a circle for an event, a dash for a note, and then the term signifier refers to a symbol that you put to the left of the bullet to make that item stand out. The star can mean that something's important, a question mark can mean you need to research something. Really, you can make up whatever you want and use them as you see fit. One of the main components that makes a bullet journal a bullet journal is the index. An index, as some people have pointed out, is really more of a table of contents because it goes in the front of your journal and it lists pages by page number rather than by topic alphabetically. Um, an index is usually in the back, but in this case, the term index refers to that list in the front of where all of your pages are. It makes it easier to find things and makes it so that you don't have to organize your pages beforehand. You can just turn to the next page, mark that in the index, and you're good to go and you don't have to worry about it. Because of this, bullet journals have page numbers. Some journals come with those pre-printed. I've never had one of those. I always write them in myself. Next up is the future log. It's just the page where you write anything that's happening in the future so that you don't forget it when that date comes. It can be as simple as a list of activities or as complicated as a full year's worth of calendars. It's up to you. The monthly log in the original system is just a list of dates and days down the side and all of your activities, to-dos, reminders, and things on the other side. You can also make a monthly with a calendar grid. That's really a matter of personal preference. I tend to switch back and forth depending on how I feel in a particular month. A weekly log is not part of the original system, but still something that a lot of people use. Any kind of page layout that's dedicated to one particular week's activities and to-dos. The daily log is where you get to the nuts and bolts of the bullet journal system. Basically, you have one list of things to do that day. Remember, the original system just had monthlies and dailies. Some people find they like to use a monthly, a weekly, and a daily. Other people only use a weekly and no dailies. It's up to you. Don't use more than you need, and don't use less than you need. The process of writing stuff out in your daily is called rapid logging. Basically, you write a short couple word sentence that defines the task for you, or a note, or an event. And you do that as quickly as you can, and just empty your brain onto that page then you don't have to worry about remembering it anymore. This is similar to a brain dump or a mind sweep, but the difference is rapid logging is something you do on your daily pages and is usually very limited in how long each task is, but it doesn't have to be. A brain dump is when you sit down and you empty your entire brain onto a whole page, and a mind sweep is writing out things as they come to you one at a time throughout the day. When you finish a task in your bullet journal, you put an X through the bullet. Some people find it helpful to put a single line through a task that they've started but not completed. If you haven't done either of those things, then you should either schedule it or migrate it. Both of these terms involve drawing an arrow on your bullet. There's a lot of confusion about the difference between scheduling and migrating. As far as I see it, it doesn't really matter what the difference is, but my understanding is you schedule something if you're putting it on a specific day to get it done, and you're migrating it if you're moving it to the next day. But the easiest way I can remember it is I basically draw an arrow towards the direction in the journal that the task has been moved. And another big part of the bullet journal, if you find a task isn't important anymore, cross it out. You don't need that in your life. Finally, and this is where the bullet journal system gets really interesting, a collection is any page in your bullet journal that's not one of the previously mentioned types of pages. So it can be a shopping list, it can be a doodle, it can be a list of your favorite restaurants, it can be anything you want. 
So those are all the basics of the original bullet journal system, but there's a lot of terminology that balloons out from that into other things that people have added into the system to get more creative and to get more out of it. You'll see people referring to pages, spreads, and layouts. These all pretty much refer to the same thing. A page is a page. A spread refers to two pages side by side, usually part of the same collection. And a layout, as far as I see it, is basically any kind of collection that involves more of a physical structure to it than just a simple list format. One neat little technique that you can incorporate into your Bujo is called threading. This is where you have a collection that's spread over multiple pages that are not consecutive. You just write the page number of the page before the current one in the collection and the one afterwards. So when you're on page one of the collection, you see, okay, I'm on page five, I'm moving on to page 20, and then when you get to page 20, you see, oh, the last page was page five, the next page is page 30, and then you can find the next page of the same collection really easily without having to flip back to the index. Trackers are a really big thing in the bullet journal community, and a tracker can be really anything that helps you keep track of different habits you want to form or habits you want to break or anything that you want to just remember what you did that day. Um, they can be any kind of format and they can be daily trackers for say how many bottles of water you drank that day. They can be weekly trackers or monthly trackers if you want to watch out for trends over a period of time. Here's another hack for you. The Alistair method was a system devised by Alistair Johnson and posted on bulletjournal.com and originally designed for the future log. Instead of leaving uniformly sized sections for each month, he put columns along the top for each month and then as he added the tasks in any particular order, he would add a dot in that column for which month the task pertained to. So when you get to that month, you just go down that column and you see all of the tasks that are in say January. It's a really great way to save space, and if you're worried about running out of space in a particularly busy month and having nothing to write in another month, this really evens out the difference for you. I find that this technique is really useful for other kinds of collections as well. I personally use it for my weekly to-do list. The rest of these terms all refer to supplies that a lot of people like to use for their bullet journals. L-E-U-C-H-T-T-U-R-M. Leuchtturm. I don't speak German, but Leuchtturm is basically how you pronounce it, and it's a brand of journal created in Germany, and the Leuchtturm 1917 is one of the most popular journals for bullet journaling. It features fountain pen friendly paper, a dedicated index, and page numbers. A lot of people love these, and you can find them on Amazon for around $20-$25. And speaking of universally loved standards, most bullet journalists seem to really love the dot grid. A dot grid, if you haven't seen it before, is basically like a graph paper, but instead of lines, it just uses dots at all the intersections of the different grids. It's kind of a sweet spot between graph paper and blank paper, and a lot of people really love it for the versatility. You can find it in Leuchtturm, Moleskine, and Rhodia notebooks, as well as several other manufacturers. Or if you want to print it out yourself, I always recommend Incompetech.com. Another kind of notebook that's really big now in bullet journaling, and is my preferred way to bullet journal, is called the Traveler's Notebook. It was originally created by the Traveler's Company, which at the time was called the Midori Company. So the Midori Traveler's Notebook is a Japanese notebook, came in two different sizes, leather notebook that you could put inserts in. Um, and other people started making other traveler's notebooks or faux dories because me dory, faux dory. You'll still see the term dory thrown around for faux dories and other traveler's notebooks. Um, some other companies include Chic Sparrow, Foxy Fix, Sojourner, and Speckled Fawns. I personally swear by my Chic Sparrows. And because you can put multiple notebooks in one traveler's notebook cover, it's a great way to be able to separate your collections from your daily planning, your future log, from your short-term notes, and I think it's a really great way to bullet journal. The term traveler's notebook refers to the leather cover itself. The notebooks that you put inside are called inserts, and these can be any kind of paper. You'll find them in all kinds of formats, decorative covers, or plain craft paper. Here's a confusing one. Dashboards are protective and decorative covers that go around the inserts in your notebook. Often they're laminated paper, some of them are pockets that you can put other things inside. Some people like to include them just to have a little bit of extra decoration in their notebooks. Other people like to use them to protect the edges of their paper inserts. And still other people really just like having a place to keep sticky notes of different reminders and things. Dashboards are probably one of the most misunderstood parts of the Traveler's Notebook system. They're really optional and a matter of personal preference. And that's all I've got to share with you today. 
If you think I left out any glaring omissions of terminology for bullet journaling or journaling in general, planning in general, leave those down in the comments. Like I said, I'd want to make sure that uh, if there's anything you think is important, you share it with the rest of us because maybe you'll teach me something. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss my videos. I post three times a week. See you guys later. Bye.